We're here with Margie Sneed, field hockey coach, uh, multiple time champion of the state in the LIS. And coach, because of the weirdness of last fall, you guys had an unbelievable roster and didn't get to fully, real, you know, have a, gr a full season like all the other fall sports. So even though there's a lot of really talented, experienced players on this team, you also have a lot of girls who haven't really played in, quote, real high school games. Uh, how do you, as a coach, blend some of your upperclassmen who played in state championships and then your freshmen, but even sophomores who haven't really gotten to compete in a postseason, uh, how do you work that that blend of experience and youth? I think for us, from the start of the season, that was our greatest challenge. Uh, we graduated 11 seniors, eight of whom are playing in college right now, and that's just experience and a competitive level, really in a, a skill, desire, passion, and drive level too. That's really hard to replace. So we felt like last year we had this barn full of horses ready to get in the gate and hear the bell ring and we never got to get to the gate. Um, so trying to manage that level of talent um, through a season that was basically uh, full of practices um, was really difficult, but a challenge that I feel like we rose to the occasion of and, and really tried to prepare those eight seniors for collegiate competition. So this year it was a vacuum of leadership. There's 11 girls in that class. And not that the underclassmen were not capable of being leaders, they just did not have to because of the number of kids in that class. So I think this year it's trying to find ways for them to show and grow their leadership um, because we just didn't have an opportunity to do that last year. And so far um, they've risen to the occasion and every opportunity that they've had. And I think they're excited by the challenge of really growing their leadership and really in terms of putting pieces and parts together, we're really lucky that we have girls that play this sport year round. Um, I'm lucky enough to hold the clipboard from you know August to November, but they do work year round and um, that's really what has made our program what it is. We can build culture, we can build community, and we can set expect expectations but they're the one that passes down that tradition year to year. Um, so you know what to expect, uh, you know what you're coming into, and you know what you're striving for. Um, so it's no different this year. We just feel like we're starting a little bit behind, but the process is still the same, the desire from the kids is still the same, and the expectation from the coaching staff is still the same. Yeah, that's, that's beautifully put. And, and when you have the players leading that culture and so deeply ensconced in it, that, that's as a coach when you can sit back and be satisfied. Exactly. That's, that's the beautiful thing. <laughs> Having said that, though, you know, any program, whether it be rivals at other schools or, or even other athletic uh, programs and other sports here, obviously you're going to look at field hockey as a program that's had unbelievable success on and off the field for so many years and maybe think um, it just runs itself. But you know as the head coach, there it, it, a lot of times the, the, the better you are, the more actually challenging it is and the higher standards you hold yourself to. So what for you as the head coach and your great staff here would you say is the biggest challenge that maybe people don't think about? I think first and foremost, it's uh, not taking your eye off the little things. If you lose sight of fundamentals and foundations, all the other stuff can't happen. Uh, the other piece is setting that expectation um, for a wide range of talent level. So our high school team is not a club team and we have players on that team that don't play year round. And so it's coming into the season and blending the beauty that is high school sports. Um, we aren't trying to be a club team. Uh, we love the year round players. They make our program successful but it's blending all of those personalities, talent levels, and helping players find what it is they're bringing to the table. And I think that is the hardest part, I think, um, for coaches each year of helping each individual athlete find how, when, and where they can contribute, and then resetting that bar again and again as you move through the end of the season. So just one more question for you, Coach. Uh, I looked at the field hockey schedule, and I think the schedule is probably about as challenging as you could possibly play with some major public school powers. No days off. No days <laughs> off. Of course, the LIS has great programs that, that are working hard to get to the level um, that they want to see. So how you say no days off, maybe that's the answer, but I'm just curious, how do you navigate 
such a challenging schedule when, let's face it, every team that you play is going to circle Trinity on their schedule and they're going to be up for you. How, how do you just keep the momentum going um, when you're playing seemingly, you know, a championship game, sometimes multiple times a week? I think for us, it's more about seeing the short term than the long term. Um, I think everybody understands uh, coming into this program, there is a, a long term goal there. Um, but it's sort of like if you don't talk about it, <laughs> um, it can linger out there. And what we want to do is face the next game, the next opponent, where we are in our process and what we have to do to get better. And I think that really helps us if we're already looking at what's happening in October. Um, we're not taking care of business in September. And there is an ebb and flow of the season and there are things that we do in September to prepare for October and certainly things we do in October to be hopeful about playing in November. Um, but it's keeping our eyes on what's right in front of us and taking one game at a time and one opponent at a time. Thanks so much to Coach Margie Sneed and uh, Assistant Coaches Ambrosie Torres and Coach Bowling. Really appreciate you all joining us, and just good luck the rest of the way. We love watching you guys and can't wait to have some more games on TESPN. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Go Titans. All right, here with senior Laney Nichols, uh, field hockey player. Uh, Laney, I was able to catch you guys' game on Friday against Deep Run, and really stood out just your play in the center, your, your speed, your skill, your leadership on the field. Uh, what do you consider your strengths that you bring to the table, but then also as a senior, what are areas of your game that you're trying to improve on? Um, I would say that some things I bring to the table is just like speed. I've been playing my whole life, so I have like my knowledge on the field. I feel like that's one of my biggest assets and just like always like communicating, talking to people like where to step. And then I would say improving. Um, I would say just being louder. I'm not like a super loud person, so just being louder. <laughs> When you are in college next year at uh, Richmond, right, um, or your, even your senior year at college, or even 20 years from now, what do you think you'll look back on as lessons you learned from coach um, that just are, are things that resonate with you, could be on or, or off the field? Um, I would say it's probably on the field. She, at practice, she's always pushing us to go speed, 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 just like we would in a game. So that's something that we're always working on. We're always running and, like, getting and – like if as if it were a game so i'd say that's probably the biggest thing all right last one you mentioned